Today we're gonna to make a tropical coffee sour. What's not to love? And I'm also gonna give you a bonus recipe for oleosaccharum. So let's get into it. Welcome back everyone to the Coffee Cocktail Channel with me, Dan Fellows. So today we're gonna to be making the tropical coffee sour, which is a banging drink. But before we do that, we need to learn how to make one of its key ingredients, which hopefully will be a really useful recipe to have in the future as well, which is for oleosaccharum. So the first thing we're gonna need is a kilner jar. And oleosaccharum is essentially using sugar to extract the oils from leftover citrus peels. So you can make lots of different versions of this. I'm gonna make a blended one. So we're gonna go grapefruit, orange, and lemon. So to do this, we wanna get 50 grams of each, orange, lemon, and grapefruit peel. And they'll all bring something a little bit different. Obviously the flavor characteristics of the citrus themselves. The grapefruit will bring a little bit more bitterness. The orange will bring probably the most sweetness out of the three, and the lemon will bring the most acidity. But you can change around the proportions of each, whichever you go for, just consider that that is gonna affect the final balance of the drink. So oleosaccharum loosely translates as oil sugar, and that's exactly what this is. So we're using sugar to pull out the oils from the citrus peels. It's a really delicious cocktail ingredient, very versatile. And because we're pre-balancing this, you can actually use it in place of your kind of classic sour mix of sugar syrup and lemon juice. So now we've got that, 150 grams in total. We wanna add 200 grams of golden caster sugar and two cinnamon sticks. So the cinnamon is an optional addition, but because the tropical coffee sour has got a really nice pineapple-y note, I'm gonna add cinnamon, which is my favorite flavor partner for cinnamon. Pineapple, I mean. So two of those, 200 grams of golden caster sugar I'm going for, but you can choose your sugar source. The sugar you choose will obviously impact the flavor profile of your oleosaccharum. So obviously a caster sugar will be lighter, a bit less uh, flavor imparting. Golden caster has a little bit of molasses in there. So you've got a little bit of that kind of rich character coming through. You can use your soft brown sugars as well. It just takes a little bit longer to pull out all those oils. And I'd probably recommend blending those with some kind of caster sugar just to make sure the process works really well. So in our jar, 200 grams of golden caster sugar, 50 grams of grapefruit peel, 50 grams of orange peel, 50 grams of lemon peel. Make sure it's properly covered, give it a good shake. And then you wanna leave that, coming back to it every few hours just to give it a shake and mix together for around about 12 hours or so. And what you'll be left with is this beauty. So it all softens down. It's probably a horrible sound on camera, but you can see all the oils have come out of the citrus. Got really nice kind of thick, treacly character, super delicious. And what we wanna do is balance this. So it's a sort of oleosaccharum sour mix. And this is gonna be a key component in our cocktail. So I wanna add 10 grams of citric acid into a jug of some kind. And I actually don't really usually like adding fresh citrus juice into cocktails or coffee cocktails specifically. I find it tends to kind of clash with the coffee a little bit. But by adding the citric acid, into the oleosaccharum, you get a really natural sweet and sour mix. You could also add lemon juice to this to balance it that way for other cocktails. But I think this way works really, really well. <laughs> this looks kind of weird. And if you've never used citric acid before, it probably is quite weird. But it's super cheap, really easy to get hold of, just Google it. And then this just adds that really nice citric acidity without any of the flavor of the lemon or orange or grapefruit, but obviously we've added that through the peels. So you get the best of both worlds, you get all this fruit to juice or whatever, I had a really nice orange juice earlier. We've got the acidity from the citric acid, got the flavor from the citrus peels, and we've got the sweetness from the sugar. So I'm gonna add 100 grams of boiling water to our citric acid. And then you wanna give it a swell to really mix that together. So you wanna keep doing this until all that citric acid is gone and dissolved into the water. 
this really is delicious. So I'm gonna pop this in here. And you wanna be a bit careful adding hot water to a kiln jar. Obviously it might be worth just releasing the cap every now and then, just so you don't have any explosions. So I give that a good mix. This also helps to dissolve all that final bit of sugar. Obviously the temperature really helps with that. Give it a really good mix. And then we're gonna pass that through a sieve. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> you don't wanna put it through a paper filter necessarily. It's probably a bit of a waste of time. And it's actually quite nice to have a little bit of texture in there. So I'm gonna pour this through carefully. And we'll be left with the most incredible kind of citrusy, spiced, yummy, citrusy sweet and sour mix. And a bit of mess on your kitchen counter. So I'm gonna put this away and by the magic of technology, you'll be left with a bottle of oleosaccharum. So let's start building the tropical coffee sour. So first up, you're gonna need a shaker of some kind. I'm gonna pop our whiskey in there. So a classic whiskey sour will have whiskey, lemon juice, sometimes lime juice, but usually lemon, a sugar syrup of some kind, bitters, and often egg white. This is a little bit of a twist on that. It's quite a loose twist to be fair, because we're going for those tropical flavor notes. I'm gonna use Cavalan number one. So I love Cavalan. They're probably one of my favorite distilleries in the world. I actually visited when I was in Taiwan a couple of years ago before lockdown and everything else. Incredible people, incredible whiskey, incredible climate to kind of produce whiskey as well. So this isn't a super old whiskey, the number one, but because it's aged in such a tropical temperature, you get really fast maturation. And the flavor profile of this is kind of pineapple, mango, vanilla, lots of delicious kind of tropical notes in there. This is the foundation of our tropical coffee sour. Next up for our kind of coffee flavor in the drink, you wanna add some coffee liqueur. So if you wanna have a look above, you can see my coffee liqueur tasting, which was quite an epic and quite intense experience where I tasted 20 different coffee liqueurs. The reason I'm choosing this one, which is Algebra Extra Dry Coffee Liqueur, is because it's got the lowest sugar content of all the coffee liqueurs I tried. I feel like I said coffee liqueur quite a lot just then. So I'm gonna add 25 mils of this. And this is made from coffee from a roastery in the UK called Has Been. And it's got really nice tropical notes of kind of ripe banana. Again, that kind of pineapple-y thing going on in there, but also a really rich toffee, treacly characteristic. So, We've got our whiskey base for our kind of whiskey sour riff of sorts. We've got our coffee, so we're on our way. We're gonna add next our magic oleosaccharum sour mix, 25 mil. And this just adds such incredible citric notes, sweetness, and just the most delicious oily characteristic. Then we're gonna add 40 mils of good quality pineapple juice. And this substitutes in for any sort of egg white in your classic whiskey sour. So if you've ever shaken pineapple juice before, you'll know it froths up, which is really lovely. So you get that really nice texture without having to add any egg white, which again, people can find a little bit strange. Then whiskey, coffee liqueur, oleosaccharum mix, pineapple juice, that would be a very delicious sour. But I wanna add sort of like seasoning to this, which is something which I do quite a lot. So first of all, we're gonna add bitters. So four dashes be quite generous. And this just again, obviously brings that bitterness, kind of elevates that grapefruit pithiness in there as well. And then as I've done in a lot of my cocktail recipes, which I'll link above to lots of coffee cocktail recipes, I'm gonna add a saline solution. So this is done at one to five. So one part great quality salt to five parts boiling water. And then I add one gram of this per 100 mils or 100 grams in the drink. So we've got 50, 25, 25, 40. So 140 mils in total. So I'm gonna add 1.4 grams of our saline solution. And it's really important you use good quality salt for this. Use the same quality salt you would eat, which I think is a good guide to life. So I'm gonna shake this over really good quality ice. Make sure you use ice that's not too watery or slushy, or not watery or slushy at all, so get really nice texture in your cocktail. So 
So I'm gonna fine strain this cocktail, which is, I guess, kind of optional, but I just think it really helps with the texture. You don't wanna have those little shards of ice in there. But you wanna make sure you get plenty of agitation so you get that really lovely texture. It's such a good drink. I made this drink earlier today, and I think it might be one of my favorite coffee cocktails I've ever made. What you can do when you've obviously made your oleo saccharum, you can reserve the peels and they make a nice garnish for the drink as well. If you leave them in a sort of uh, dehydrator, they will dehydrate, obviously. And there we have the tropical coffee sour. So tropical notes from the whiskey, tropical notes from the coffee, sourness and sweetness from the oleosaccharum sour mix, tropical notes from the pineapple, bitterness from the bitters, a little bit of salt from the saline, beautiful texture. It's a really, really nice drink. Would strongly recommend trying this at home. I think I'm gonna drink the whole thing, which probably shouldn't do. <clears throat> I'm traveling to the UK Bristol Championships tomorrow, about 6 a.m. So I probably shouldn't drink coffee or alcohol before bed, but there we go. That's such a nice drink. The frozen glass makes all the difference. The really nice texture. You get a little bit of aroma from the orange, but not too much. I think it's quite obvious to sometimes put an orange peel over a coffee cocktail and it's good a lot of the time, but sometimes it can be a little bit overpowering. It's just so nice. Tropical, chocolatey, coffee-fied, creamy without being creamy cold, delicious, complex. So if you like this sort of thing, make sure you like, share with your friends if you think anyone might be interested in coffee and cocktails. Most importantly, make sure you hit subscribe below, above, I don't know, around here somewhere, wherever it might be. And I will see you next time for some more coffee cocktail fun. So have a nice week and cheers. finished.